Ever thought about what's behind the fancy world of Manhattan's high society? Well, get ready, because the 1949 movie East Side, West Side digs deep into it. It's not just about fancy stuff. It's a wild ride of funny, surprising, and sad moments that'll keep you hooked. As the story unfolds, you'll start questioning things like loyalty, love, and betrayal. So stick with it, because there's a lot more to uncover in this gripping tale. Now, do you remember a scene or moment from this film that stuck with you? Share your thoughts below. Let's dive into the drama, the passion, and the mystery of East Side, West Side. It's a journey you'll remember. East Side, West Side is a movie from 1949 about people living in New York City. It looks at the challenges of relationships and issues in cities. The story is about conflicts over cheating, wanting power, and social status. The movie shows how life is different in rich and poor parts of the city. It follows the lives of different characters, showing their hopes, mistakes, and wants. The main characters are Brandon and Jesse Bourne, a married couple played by Barbara Stanwyck and James Mason. Brandon, a rich person, gets caught in a scandalous affair, while Jesse struggles with feeling hurt and what society thinks. Their rocky relationship is a big part of the story, showing the problems in their social group. Other important characters are Isabel Lorison, who used to date Brandon, and Dwyer, a politician caught in a love mess with his wife and another woman. Through these characters, the movie talks about loyalty, wanting power, and what's right and wrong. East Side, West Side was well-liked for its interesting story and great acting. People praised how real it felt and how the characters changed. The movie is seen as a classic in American film. In the movie East Side, West Side, a notable actress made her debut. She began her journey with the prestigious ballet Russ, joining the corps de ballet at a mere age of 14. During her time with the company, she toured both the United States and Europe. To fit the company's aesthetics, she adopted various Russian-sounding names such as Natasha Chuleles, Celia Sidorova, and Maria Istromny. Before this role, she was considered for a significant part in The Wizard of Oz. Originally set to portray the Wicked Witch of the West, she declined when the character's appearance changed to an ugly witch, deviating from the initial plan of a beautiful yet wicked queen. Jewel Rose made her debut in East Side, West Side, marking a significant milestone in her career. Her journey from the ballet stage to the silver screen was a remarkable transition, showcasing her versatility as an artist. Director Mervyn Leroy praised Barbara Stanwyck for her kindness toward everyone on set, including technicians and extras. She missed out on two major MGM musical roles due to injury and pregnancy, allowing Ann Miller and Leslie Caron to take over instead. The film performed modestly at the box office, earning MGM a small profit according to studio records. East Side, West Side is a 1949 movie that gained attention in the book Back in the Saddle essays on Western film and television actors. While Ava Gardner and William Conrad shared the screen in The Killers, they did not have scenes together in this film. Interestingly, this movie marks the beginning of a trio of collaborations between James Mason and Ava Gardner, the subsequent films being Pandora and The Flying Dutchman and Mayerling. Ava Gardner and William Conrad's prior work together, combined with the subsequent collaborations between James Mason and Ava Gardner, add layers of intrigue to the movie's casting dynamics. In the movie East Side, West Side, released in 1949, Gail Sondergaard starred in her final role for 20 years until slaves due to being blacklisted for refusing to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee. MGM acquired the film rights for $200,000 equivalent to $25 million today, as reported in The Hollywood Reporter on September 29, 1947. Interestingly, at the age of seven, she attended the White House Easter Egg Roll and met then First Lady Grace Coolidge. Sondergaard's career spanned various roles, making her mark in cinema before her hiatus. In the final film of Farag Burroughs, there's a notable distinction to be made. He shouldn't be confused with the American actor Jim Mason, also known as James Mason, who was active in silent films, particularly westerns, during the 1920s and 1930s. In East Side, West Side, Gail Sondergaard portrays Barbara Stanwyck's character's mother, despite being only eight years older than Stanwyck in real life at the time of filming. East Side, West Side offers a compelling narrative with Farrak Burroughs making his last appearance. However, it's essential to differentiate him from James Mason, the silent film actor. Meanwhile, Gail Sondergaard's portrayal of Stanwyck's mother is intriguing, considering the minimal age difference between them in real life. 
East Side, West Side, released in 1949, features a score by Miklos Rasa, with parts seemingly influenced by George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. The film stars Barbara Stanwyck, who, upon her passing, had no funeral. Instead, she was cremated, and her ashes were scattered over Lone Pine, California, where she filmed some of her westerns. Beverly Michaels makes her film debut in the role of Phyllis Backett. Michaels is married to Academy Award-winning screenwriter Russell Rouse and is the mother of Academy Award-winning film editor Christopher Rouse. Her performance marks the beginning of her cinematic career. East Side, West Side is a 1949 film starring Barbara Stanwyck and Van Heflin, marking their third and final collaboration on screen. Their previous movies together include The Strange Love of Martha Ivers and B.F.'s Daughter. The film features a notable scene involving Shiris, who, despite being interred at Hillside Memorial Park, a prominent Jewish cemetery in Los Angeles, was actually a practicing Methodist. Her funeral was overseen by Dr. Gary Allen Dickey, pastor of the United Methodist Church of Westlake Village. In recognition of its contribution to the Western genre, East Side, West Side was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1973. In the movie East Side, West Side, the same first floor of the apartment appears as in Adam's Rib. Though decorated differently, it's a recognizable setting for those familiar with both films. MGM frequently paired Ava Gardner and Sid Sherry's due to their striking resemblance. But despite sharing just one scene, Barbara Stanwyck and Ava Gardner passed away within five days of each other in 1990. Stanwyck on January 20 and Gardner on January 25. The 1949 movie East Side, West Side went through considerations involving Greer Garson, Fred McMurray, and Claudette Colbert for the lead roles, as reported in contemporary film press articles. Notably, director Mervyn Leroy, who had previously provided a career break for a blacklisted actress in Anthony Adverse, faced challenges in 1947. In an attempt to gauge industry reactions, he cast the blacklisted actress in a supporting role as Barbara Stanwyck's mother in East Side, West Side. Unfortunately, the negative response she received sealed her blacklist fate, leading to a 28-year absence from major Hollywood films. This move by Leroy to test the waters with the actress's inclusion in East Side, West Side marked a pivotal moment in her career, setting the stage for a lengthy hiatus from the Hollywood scene. In the 1949 movie East Side, West Side, a tragic trivia fact lies behind the scenes. During filming, one of the lead actors suffered a heart attack on set and passed away shortly after. This unexpected event cast a shadow over the production and left the cast and crew devastated. Directed by Mervyn Leroy, the film delves into the complexities of relationships and societal expectations. Set in New York City, it follows the lives of a group of affluent residents, exploring themes of infidelity, loyalty, and the consequences of one's actions. The plot centers around a married couple, their friends, and the various affairs and betrayals that unfold within their social circle. As secrets are revealed and tensions rise, the characters are forced to confront the harsh realities of their choices. Despite its somber undertones, the film is praised for its realistic portrayal of human nature and the intricacies of marriage and friendship. The performances of the cast, including Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, and Van Heflin, are particularly notable for their depth and emotional resonance. Overall, East Side, West Side offers a compelling exploration of love, loss, and the complexities of human relationships, making it a memorable addition to the film noir genre.